Welcome to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Your hosts are here to speak the words of the spirits and answer your questions. Now, here are Connie and Barry. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us on Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife. I'm Barry Strom, your host, and I will be using my gift of spirit communication to spread our knowledge of the afterlife to anyone that's willing to open their minds and to listen. And I'm Connie Strom, your co-host. Our goal on this show is to bring you as much information about what happens after death and in the spirit world as possible. We can guarantee you there is a hereafter. It is an absolute fact that we will pass from this current life. It's just a matter of time. Hopefully, we'll be able to help you have no fear of what is to come at that time of passing. Okay, now for the people that are not familiar with me, I have a very, very unique ability. I have I can speak with the souls on the other side of the life veil, and we refer to this as channeling. At the present time, we have over 360 videos on our YouTube channel. It's in my name, Barry Strom. In addition, I'm the author of nine books. Uh, that are currently available on Amazon. So we do know a little bit about this. The books uh, on Amazon will bring you information from the images of ghosts on the Gettysburg Battlefield in Pennsylvania to the channeled words of God and Mohammed. I'm speaking with spirits for over a thousand hours, so we've learned quite a bit of information. And we would like to pass that information on to all of you. On this first show... We'd like to give you a basic framework upon which we will work on this show. In the future, we will have guests that will address many subjects associated with the afterlife. We will have exorcists, individuals speaking of near-death experiences, practicing witches, and much more. Please send recommendations for future guests to our email, exploringtheafterlife2023 at gmail.com. That's exploringtheafterlife2023 at gmail.com. On many of the shows, we will be taking live calls to answer your questions. Today, we will be taking calls after our second break, and our call-in number is 866-472-5788. That's 866-472-5788. When you call in, please keep the discussion civil. You will probably be asking questions of a spirit, and they definitely know where you live. So whenever we are doing live channelings, either the caller or I will be the one asking the questions. Barry will be answering the questions in the words of the spirits. Okay, and in our show, well, I think it's going to be very interesting, and that someone will always disagree with almost every word that we speak. Our show will be very non-denominational, and that it will bring you what the spirits say about all religions and life after death. An atheist is going to disagree with everything we say, so hopefully they will still listen. Christians that believe we should not be speaking with spirits or that every word of scriptures is correct, they will be upset. Everyone needs to understand that all of the great prophets had psychic abilities and spoke to the spirits. We will not be bringing you our opinions or those related to Voice America. We will be answering questions based on information learned from years of channeling spirits or the live channeled words of the spirits themselves. Our desire is that everyone will learn from our messages. Listeners also have to understand on our show that speaking to spirits is definitely not an exact science. There's definitely evil energies out there and occasionally We'll have a spirit come through who's not who they say they are and give us some bad information. Believe it or not, Connie, there are also times that I'll make a mistake. If you call in and ask a personal question for future advice, I have no idea if the answering spirit is accurate or not. So if you call in, please consider any such information for recreational purposes only And do not make any life-changing decisions based on the answer. We'll devote a lot of time in future shows as to how life plans work, 
what information guides and spirits are allowed to give, and what prayers can be answered, and much more. There are certain absolutes upon which we will be basing the show. First of all, there's absolutely an afterlife. If there wasn't, we wouldn't be doing this show. All humans have spirit guides that try to help you make decisions. We will soon be channeling a spirit guide and asking her questions. Reincarnation is real. We will be spending a lot of time discussing prior lives. There's another dimension that you can refer to as heaven, paradise, the other side, and so on. This dimension has different levels. The dimension of heaven is all around you. Upon death, all souls will enter that dimension at some time. What happens when you enter that dimension depends on how you led your incarnate life. There is no hell as described in the Bible, but there is a lower level. There's a supreme energy that you can refer to as God, Allah, Spirit, or any way you please. Angels are real and support the supreme energy. Soul energies have everlasting life. The human body has only a short incarnate lifetime, but the soul energy that has everlasting life and lives forever and has existed since creation. Evil energies are very real. Now, these facts form the foundation of what we've been told about life, spirit world, the afterlife. We will be channeling guides. We'll be doing that in a little bit here. Holy spirits, ghosts, and we're even going to talk to animal souls at some times. Next week, we're going to be talking with angels. So we're going to be getting off to the best start we can get with our show. Uh, you'll find out that the angels we talk to are going to support the basic information that Connie just gave you. Now, in the final segment tonight, we're going to allow listeners to ask questions of our spirit guide. If you would like to speak with a real spirit guide, Give us a call at 866-472-5788, and we'll allow you to ask a question yourself. So we might as well get started with it. Connie, let's start asking some questions. Now, my master guide's name is Laura. We have been using her, we've been using her through many, many years of information, and we are going to talk to her tonight. She has an incredible amount of information available. So, Connie? Hey, okay, Laura, thank you for joining us. Actually, you're always with us, but thank you for being here for this. Uh, would you like to begin by telling us some information about spirit guides? Now, I'll be speaking in the words of the spirit from here on out. Spirit guides are generally souls that have lived incarnate lives in the past. Now, there are many different types of energies available to help you, but I, I am a master guide. I have served for thousands of years guiding other spirits. I have lived lifetimes in the past. I have done many, many different things. I have been with Barry since he was born. You have spirit guides since you were born. You will have guides for all of your learning experiences. When an infant comes into the world, it has no knowledge of what is taking place around it. It has to learn. Spirit guides will advise a human soul. It will tell them how to advance. It will show them how to walk. It will show them all the things they need to grow. Now, humans have free will, so they can make their own decisions. You reach a point in your life where guides will advise you, but you will make your own decision whether to follow that advice or not to follow it. The important thing for you to know is that guides are always with you. 
You can ask them in prayer. You can ask them mentally at any time. For many people, it's very difficult to communicate with the messages they receive from their guides. As you become more adept at, say, meditation, or we may come to you in your dreams, sometimes the advice we give will be that gut feeling that you have on whether you should do this or do that. Every human comes into an incarnate life with a life plan. We will help you try to follow that life plan, but you will make your own decisions. As we speak in the future, we will bring you more information about guides. Angels act as guides. Your deceased family members can help guide you as well. So it's a fairly complex situation, but I hope that answer will suffice for the time being. I think it will. Thank you, Laura. Laura, do spirit guides have access to information about future events? We, on this side, can see the past and see the future. Some guides are much more advanced than others. I am a master guide, so I can see future events. I can see past events. I can see what happened in your other lifetimes as well. But you must keep in mind that we can only go so far in advising you. Your free will is the most important thing in your life. Your free will is what will determine whether you follow your life plan. Future events, we will, te- we will try to guide you, but we will not interfere with your free will. Thank you. So how does time work on the other side? When you're on the, on the other side, there is no time. Time is basically an invention on Earth. I know that that is hard for you to comprehend. I know that the concept of no time seems to make no sense to you. But it is a reality. When you are over here, there are no time criterions. There is no such thing as a schedule that you have to keep. And depending on the level that you are over here in heaven, that will determine whether you can, how much of the future or how much of the past you'll be able to see. The lower levels are not, the individuals or souls in those lower levels are not gifted to be able to see the past or the future. Okay. So, I think you're insinuating that there are limits to what you can tell us about the future? Yes. We will never tell you something that will directly influence the decisions that you would have on your life path. For instance, we would never tell you your time of passing, because if you knew when you were to move into the other dimension, you would make decisions that could alter the life plan with which you were given. You may have been sent with a life plan that required for you to suffer a type of illness. If we told you that your passing would be shortly in the future, you may take steps to shorten that life plan. And by shortening that life plan, you would be not learning the lesson that you needed to learn. So you see, it's very tricky. We basically walk a tightrope over here about what we can tell you of the future. There are things that you can know, but there are things that you cannot know. It is very important that you do what you feel is best. You know the difference between right and wrong, for instance. If you do something that you know is wrong, then you're going against your life plan. Another thing to keep in mind 
is that there is no evil here in this dimension. No human is ever sent back for a mission that includes evil. That may be hard to understand as well. Evil energy is a characteristic of energies enc encompassed in a human life, a human incarnate life on this planet. That is something that you will not encompass on the other side. The future, as we see it, is based on events that are taking place at the current time. If you find that major decisions are made in the future, say a year down the road, then those events can change the future. We see the future as it will occur based on the events that are currently taking place. I know that it's a bit of a difficult concept to understand. Okay, what is human soul energy? Could you describe that for us? Each soul has a very unique energy. They've had it since the creation. They've had it for millions or billions of years. That energy is inborn and unique to each soul. It's a specific energy. When you pass, that energy leaves the body and moves into the other dimension. Once that soul energy leaves and enters that dimension, then there is no remaining energy in that incarnate body. That is why a body decomposes after death. Okay, Laura, thank you so much. When we come back from a short break, we're going to continue channeling with our spirit guide. Connie and Barry will be back after a few words from our sponsors. Become our friend on Facebook. Post your thoughts about our shows and network on our timeline. Visit Facebook.com forward slash Voice America. Is death the end of the journey of the soul or a time of new beginnings? Is there proof of an afterlife? What would historic figures say if they lived today? Psychic and channeler Barry Strom uses his gift of spirit communication to answer these questions and explore all aspects of the hereafter. Have all the information necessary not to fear life's final journey. Tune in to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Variety Channel. Voice America programs are now available on your favorite connected device, including Amazon, Alexa, and Google Home. Through streams with Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, and iHeartRadio, listening to your favorite show is as easy as saying the show name followed by the word podcast. Hey, Alexa, play Finding Your Frequency podcast. If that doesn't work, try adding on TuneIn or on iHeartRadio or on Apple Podcasts. Psychic and author Barry Strom has now published nine books dealing with supernatural subject from ghosts to aliens. His most recent books, Messages of God and Messages of the Prophet Muhammad for a Modern World, bring you the channeled messages of the founders of Christianity and Islam. Their words are intended to guide their followers through these modern times. These books are available in softcover and ebook on Amazon.com. Signed copies of all of Strom's books are available on his website, www.barrystrom.com. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com. Welcome back to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife. Here are your hosts, Connie and Barry Strom. 
Hey, welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the first segment where we actually spoke with the spirit guide because we're going to do more of it. So we've been discussing the spirit guides or channelings. In this segment, we're going to bring you more information as to how it works over there. Hope you enjoy it. Connie, let's do some more questions. Hey, Laura, will you tell us about the dimension referred to as heaven? There is another dimension that surrounds everyone in your incarnate life. For instance, ghosts that remain earthbound remain in the earth dimension and still haven't totally moved into the dimension to which you refer to as heaven or paradise. Heaven is all around you. It's not in the sky. Well, it is in the sky because heaven is just simply a dimension that you cannot look into. Animals have the ability to look partially into that dimension. If you ever noticed an animal, sometimes they're staring, sometimes they're looking in the distance, sometimes their heads will actually move following a, a spirit form. Heaven is absolutely indescribable. Now, the dimension that we refer to as heaven and we're just we're using that term because that is a commonly used term for that dimension. It can be paradise, has many names depending on the religion to which you follow. But there are seven levels in that dimension. When you're sent back, you're sent back with a life plan. How you follow that life plan and how you live a good life will determine your placement in the realms or the levels of heaven. For instance, if you are in the fifth level, you cannot do nearly as much as what you could do as if you were in the seventh level. If you're in the first level, you've done a lot of evil. When you return into this dimension, your guides will judge how you've lived your life. Now, it is possible that you've lived a very good life, helped others, shown charity, have not shown violence. It is very possible that you have lived a good life, but didn't exactly follow your life plan. Well, you still have the ability to advance because it's how you live your life that determines whether you will move into a higher realm or perhaps stay where you are or even be demoted in realm. It all comes down to how you live your life. Your guides, your angels will help, but your guides know everything that takes place in a lifetime. You see, each of you carry a book of life in your, in your mind. In humans, there's a huge area of your brain that is not used for your day-to-day -day life or for your intelligence. This book of life is an energy. We can access that energy, and we can look at your prior lives. You see, there are many, many things that we can do on this side that is that humans are totally incapable of believing or understanding. It takes many, many lifetimes to learn the lessons that a soul needs to learn because there's basically an infinite number of lessons to learn. You may need to know grief. You may have lived a life where you harmed others, and that lifetime gave you a karma that you have to repay in future lifetimes. Heaven is what you want it to be, basically. If you're in the upper levels, you can think where you want to be, and you will be there. If you're in the lower levels, it's quite different. 
if you're in a lower level, you cannot visit the upper levels. The levels of above you are forbidden because those are occupied people that have learned many more lessons than you have. However, if you're in an upper level, you can visit those that are residing in levels lower than the ones that, to which you are assigned. That is a risk of showing evil in your lifetime. It is possible that you can be assigned to a lower level and not be able to visit all of the family members that have come, that have passed before you. Your family members would have the option to come down to visit, but you would be limited in what you could do. There are definite benefits to be had in living a good life. Simply live a good life and you will enjoy the benefits of the dimension that is all around you that we refer to as heaven. Is there a hell? There is no place of fire and torture. That was a concept made up by the ancients because they wanted you to rely upon the sacraments of a religion in order to enter heaven. You see, the ancients had no way of knowing truly of the, of the magnificence or of the different realms in heaven. They wanted you to fear not living a good life and not using their sacraments. So the only concept they could have was hell and was fire and torture. That was very predominant in the early times. So they used this place that they referred to as hell as a place of fire, of torture, of anything that people would fear. Now that being said, there is a level below the seven levels to which truly evil people are sent. It is a place of nothingness. It is a place where the soul is sent to contemplate what they've done. It is a place where people can be there for thousands of years. Keep in mind that I just told you that there was no time on this side. So time is a relative thing for humans. A soul will remain in that lower level until it understands the evil that it has done and until it determines how it will make up the karma, the bad karma that that soul did in its lifetime. When the soul is allowed out of that lower level, it will have to start over in the first or lowest level. It will have to live lifetimes where it replays the karma for what it's done. So, in the sense of a classic burning hell, it does not exist. But there is a truly a lower level, a place of nothingness, where your soul truly does not want to go. So what happens when you die? When you die, your soul, your incarnate soul, leaves your body. It passes into that dimension. When it passes into heaven, now we are, we're going to, for the for the current time, ignore the souls that choose to be remain earthbound or become what you refer to as ghosts. The soul will return. It will be greeted. It will be welcomed into the realms. 
Angels will be there to help you become acclimated. Many people that pass suddenly are inclined to not enter the realms immediately. They feel that they are more comfortable with the souls that they were living with. But the angels, your family members, they will welcome you into this new realm. As you become acclimated, your guides will tell you what you've done right and what you've done wrong in your life. They will tell you the realm of which you will be residing. The entrance into heaven will be pretty much what you expect it to be. If you expect it to be a tunnel with a light at the end of it, your soul will enter that and go to the light. That is the most common thing that souls will see. There are times that people will have near-death experiences, and they will, be re- they will be greeted before they are allowed to enter the realms, and their souls will still have things to do in incarnate form. So they will be sent back to that incarnate form. The day of your passing will be the first day of a new life for you. The day of your passing will be the greatest day of your life. Now, the grief that is left behind is another issue, and that is something that the incarnate souls have to handle. But if you've lived a good life, have nothing to fear, then There is absolutely nothing to fear on your day of passing. You will be greeting your family members. You'll be seeing the angels for the first time. There are many, many things that will happen. But it will be a wonderful event for your soul. Keep in mind that it is your soul that has everlasting life. Your incarnate body has a very definite short-term life. Do not ever fear death. Death is inevitable. Everyone will face it. It is not something to be feared. Hey, uh, would you go into a little more detail about what happens to souls like Adolf Hitler? I mean, what exactly is his soul dealing with right now? His soul is sent to the lowest level, and it will be there for an incredible amount of time. We are talking thousands and thousands of your years. He will have to make up a karma for each soul that he damaged. Think about that. Think about how many lifetimes it will be to show a positive karma. He will be there until God decides that he understands truly what he did and that he truly understands what he will have to make up when he returns to incarnate lives. Could you please tell us about reincarnation? Reincarnation is absolute. Reincarnation is how you return to other incarnate lives and how you follow the many life plans that are required to advance in the realms of heaven. Reincarnation, if you were born, you have reincarnated. These souls that are now humans have reincarnated many other times and in many other bodies and many other forms. How they are sent back depends 
once again upon the lessons that they need to have learned. It is only through living multiple lifetimes that you can learn the multiple lessons that are required to truly advance in heaven. What can you tell us about human life plans? That's probably a new subject for a lot of people. Human life plans are a lot of work. Your guides, your angels, your family members, spirits, they will decide on a plan that is best suited to allow you to have a chance to advance in the realms. It may be that you have lived lifetimes with souls many times. For instance, you and Barry have been together in six different lifetimes. The souls on the other side will decide what relationship. It may be that souls lived a life as husband and wife, today, in this next life, there may be brothers and sisters. But one thing that you can understand is that reincarnation is absolute. The ancients did not want you to believe in reincarnation. They wanted to believe that you had one life to fulfill and to follow, and that it was only through a single life that you could obtain entrance. Okay, let's take another short break. When we come back, we're going to take some phone calls. Connie and Barry will be back after a few words from our sponsors. Follow us on Twitter at VoiceAmericaTRN. Get the lowdown on guests, new shows, and your favorites. That's VoiceAmericaTRN. Psychic and author Barry Strom has now published nine books dealing with supernatural subject from ghosts to aliens. His most recent books, Messages of God and Messages of the Prophet Muhammad for a Modern World, bring you the channeled messages of the founders of Christianity and Islam. Their words are intended to guide their followers through these modern times. These books are available in softcover and ebook on Amazon.com. Signed copies of all of Strom's books are available on his website, www.barrystrom.com. Connect with us, and we'll connect with you. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is on LinkedIn. Get the first word about happenings with the network, where our next live event will be, and what's up with our hosts. Look up Voice America on LinkedIn. Is death the end of the journey of the soul, or a time of new beginnings? Is there proof of an afterlife? What would historic figures say if they lived today? Psychic and channeler Barry Strom uses his gift of spirit communication to answer these questions and explore all aspects of the hereafter. Have all the information necessary not to fear life's final journey. Tune in to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Variety Channel. Welcome back to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife. Have a question for Barry or their guests? Join us on the show at 866-472-5788. That's 866-472-5788. Now, back to the show. Okay, everybody, welcome back. I hope that you take advantage of this. We've got a few moments here where we can take some live phone calls. Uh, As the announcer said, our number is 866-472-5788. So until somebody decides that they'd like to speak with us, why don't we do some more channeling, Connie? Laura, do animals have souls, and do they go to the same heaven as humans? Animals absolutely have souls. They are much more developed than most people would think. Their souls go to the same human or to the to the same heaven as humans go to as well. Animals also come back and can act as guides for humans. 
how many times have you felt that the love of an animal has brought you peace and comfort? Well, there actually are animals that have been sent back to act as guides, and animals will repeat. Animals can return. Animals can understand what you're saying. Trust me when I tell you there's no such thing as a dumb animal. Animals have a purpose in God's eyes. They can act as a source of food for humans. They do not come back with the same life plans or demands, but they can take different forms. Animals are capable of following humans through many, many life plans. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit here, and I'm going to tell you a story. We have a cat named Bodhi. We had Bodhi was a, an animal that we had 15 years ago, and we had to put her down, put him down. It was a beautiful Tonkinese, broke our hearts, but it was time for him, and we had to go to the vet. So once we learned that we could channel with animals, we started using a, a specially designed channeling board. It had letters, numbers in a circle, far from a Ouija. They gave us prayers of protection. But in the beginning, as we were learning channeling, we used this channeling board. Well, about seven, eight years ago, I realized that I could communicate with animals on the other side using this board. So I contacted Bodhi on the other side, and the answer comes back, hello, hello, I was waiting for you to call for me. Well, I was shocked, but anyway, I'm speaking to, the, to my pet on the other side, and I said, Bodhi, would you like to come back to us? We would simply love to have you back. Would you reincarnate? Well, Bodhi answers, no, I want a proper home. Well, at that time, we were back in Pennsylvania in an apartment, and we had our home out here in Utah. Bodhi had lived in before, and he wasn't about to come back until we came back home, and he had, had his old home back. So long story short, I keep bugging him to, to return to us. So one night he says, I'm going to return to you as a black kitten, and I will return to you in 13 months and I will find you. Okay, so Bodhi's coming back. Well, about 13 months is almost up, and we still do not have this little cat. So we were working with another medium at the time, and we, we were using the channeling board. And I said, I asked uh, Laura, I said, is, is Bodhi back yet? It's almost time. And Donna, who was a, a psychic, she says, what, what, you know, what is this? And I said, it's this little black kitten that's coming back. And she goes, I think I've seen Bodhi. Said, How have you seen Bodhi? Well, it turns out her father was buried in a cemetery down in Baltimore. She was down tending to the grave, and the people that were running the cemetery said, we have kittens. Would you like to have kittens? And she said, no, I have pets, but I'll take a look at them. And she said, this little black kitten came out on the porch, living under, under their porch, stared at her and went under. She said, I think that's your Bodhi. And I, I asked the guy, and I said, is that Bodhi? Is, it, is she back? And the answer comes back, yes, Bodhi is back. So we go down the next day to pick her up, call down, drive the whole way to Baltimore, and this little black kitten comes out, looks at Connie, goes back under the porch. We had wet food. We had everything with us, and there was no way this cat was coming back, so we had to come back up without the cat. But there had been this little tabby, beautiful little kitten that was coming out, looking at us, and we both at the same time said, well, I guess she wants a, her brother or another cat to come with her for company. 
She called back down, said, okay, we're going to take two cats. Drove down the next day. Bodie and the kitten walk out. We pick them up, put them in the car, and away we go. So we get them back up. Um, always, by the way, she also told us she wanted to be named Bodie again, that she liked the name. And this little black kitten has the exact personality that we had, that she had in her prior life. So we're channeling one day, and I'm thinking, what is with this little black tabby cat that we also have? So we got on the channeling board, and I asked the guides, I said, is there, what, what's the story on this tabby cat? And it comes back, and the answer that we receive is, that cat was your daughter's dog named Ginger. Ginger was a golden retriever that my daughter had that had passed five, six years ago. And this was a golden tabby cat. Well, we wound up naming him Leo. So now I have two animals. Our two pets are both members of our soul family. But the story doesn't quite end there. We're on the channeling board again. And Connie says, you know, I just think that Bodhi was with me before in other lifetimes. So I said, Laura, was Bodhi ever with her before she was Bodhi, before he was Bodhi one? On the channeling board, it spells out the words starlight. I look at Connie and I say, what's starlight? Well, she says that was her pony when she was a kid. Apparently, the animal soul that we still have as Bodhi was Bodhi 2, Bodhi 1, and Starlight, her pony. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's very, very real. There's absolutely no doubt that animals do reincarnate. There's no doubt that animals are capable of coming back, that animals pick who they want to live with. If you'd like to read more about animal souls, I have a website called spiritspredict.com. You can go in and you can read the entire story of the reincarnation of Bodhi. It's the page called Bodhi is Back. If you love animals, take time to go read the story because when we have to put them down, it's like you're losing a family member. But just remember that they're also very close. After we had to put, after we put Bodie down the first time, she would actually come back to us. Okay, I see that we have David from Pennsylvania for a phone call. So let's see how it works. I've never taken a call before, so good luck. Okay, David. Hello, David. We hope. David, uh, if you can hear me, do you, can you? Well, I don't think we're going to be able to talk to David. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that was supposed to be my first call, and it kind of went the way I thought it was going to go. Yeah. Expect the worst, and it may come to you. So... Reincarnation. Let me talk a little bit about that. We had a place in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, near the battlefield, and that's how I really got started ghost hunting. I would go out on the battlefield, and there would be a place there where I saw a lot of activity. I was out one night taking photographs at night, and all of a sudden, I hear in my head, don't, don't go there. I was walking down this wooden path where I had bunches of information. I would get pictures of spirits, ghost dogs, the whole thing. So I turned, did not go down the path, and all of a sudden this big tree falls right on the path where I would have been. 
had I not listened to this message in my head, I would have been under that tree at night. So I'm thinking, man, that was a guardian angel. So little time goes on and we're on using the channeling board. So I thought, well, I'm going to let me find out who saved my life that night out there. So I asked Laura, who was it? The message comes back. It was the boys. What do you mean it was the boys? Turns out it was the guys that I fought with on the Gettysburg battlefield. I had been a Confederate soldier, and I had fought with these people. I went back, went out, channeled with them. I have the ability to go out on that Gettysburg battlefield and to speak with the soldiers that I fought with. So anyway, next week, we're going to talk about angels. We'll be, we'll channel actual archangels, ask them questions, and hopefully we'll take some phone calls and let people ask angels questions themselves. We have a lot of videos up on our YouTube channel of channeling angels, so I hope you will join us. Tell your friends about it. Two weeks from tonight, we're going to be discussing evil energies and have a special guest, Reverend Sean Whittington. He's a famous exorcist. He's going to, he has some amazing stories, and we're hopefully going to take some phone calls and let him answer questions for you. I'd like to thank you all for joining us on our first show tonight. Uh, if you'd like to see more of our channelings, we have over 360 videos on our YouTube channel. It's in the name of Barry Strom. If you go onto our YouTube channel, you can, you can see the whole progression as we, as we learn. When I was 60 years old, I didn't even believe in ghosts. So you can see us do paranormal investigations. You can hear us do ghost box. You can hear spirits speak on the ghost box. There's a ton of things on that, on that YouTube channel. Our latest work is basically channeling. We have some wonderful message. We do two podcasts a week as well. We do a Sunday sermon on Sunday mornings, and we do a weekly message from Jesus on Wednesdays. It's, it's a wonderful world out there once you learn what's really going on. The spirit world, the guides are all with you all the time. All you have to do is ask. Prayer is your strongest weapon. You've got to let them know what's on your mind. If it works with your life plan, they're going to do what you need to do. So anyway, I'd like to thank you for listening on this, our first show. Join us next week. You're going to love it. Tell your friends about our show. Join us each Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time on the Voice America Variety Radio Network. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Tune in next week for another informative and inspiring episode on the Voice America Variety Channel at 9 a.m. Pacific Time.